Yo friend, welcome to the Left Coast Studio. And sitting behind me is my super functional, minimalistic filmmaker's desk. It was super simple to build. It holds 129 terabytes of my hard drives underneath. Today I'm gonna to show you all its features, how I built it, and hopefully give you some inspiration for the next time you wanna procrastinate editing and just build a desk. <laughs> I see my desk as a sacred workplace. It's where I go to hammer out my craft by editing my films and YouTube videos. I documented building version one of this desk over two years ago now. And I also showcased some of the various upgrades I've been doing to the desk since then. But one key problem still remained over the hundreds of videos I've edited at this desk. And that is the constant clutter that comes with having dozens of hard drives you need to connect to the computer. The way I have my hard drive set up currently at the desk would give any minimalist a heart attack. So that brings us to version three of the desk. We're gonna try create a far cleaner hard drive storage solution and also make the desk portable so I can move it around my small studio, get various different shots and also be able to move it out of the way when I have a different project to work on. As with most of my spontaneous projects, I started with going over to Home Depot and seeing what parts I could pick up. I settled on using some four x four beams for the main structure of the desk. I also got some one by six seater to make the monitor stand and the shelf for the hard drives. Albeit, if you wanna save some cost, you definitely don't have to buy seater for your build. I started by taking some measurements off my current desk setup and double checking which height I wanted to end up for my monitors. I wanted the very top of the monitors to be about level with my eyesight for the best ergonomic position. The first thing I cut was the legs for the new desk. I wanted the total height to be 28 and a half inches. I was careful not to cut them too short on my first cuts. So I cut them a little long to begin with and slowly narrowed them down so that they were all exactly the same height. After I had four legs, I set out to cut what would be the main cross member of the desk, the largest supporting beam in the whole structure. Because I wasn't working off drawings or anything, at this point, I was still trying to put together exactly what the desk would look like and what the final measurements of everything would be. I wanted the desk to be really sturdy, so I bought several of these 90 degree brackets that I screwed into the beams to hold the whole thing together. I put some matte black paint on them the night before to get rid of the stainless steel finish. I then cut some wood from the previous desk to help create the attachment points between the two sets of legs. Now you can see the main structure of the desk come together. If you're wanting to just build a really sturdy desk, something similar like this could probably work great for you if you didn't want to add wheels and a hard drive shelf. You can simply add a sheet of plywood to this and call it a day. And boom, we officially have a desk. At this point, I still was unsure how I was gonna make the monitor stand. And I was still trying to decide if I was gonna leave the back of the desk open as well. I ended up deciding that I really liked the pallet board rough barn look. So I decided to figure out a way to make a door that could open and close on the back of the desk to reveal the hard drive shelf and cables. Now I got a little excited here and skipped a step. You can see the main post that's holding the two legs together is now recessed slightly to make room for the door to open and close. I also made another quick trip to Home Depot to buy some more one by six cedar and door hinges. Another step I forgot to show was I had to recut all the pallet boards to be the new height of the desk. To attach the door and have it open, I used these four cabinet brackets. I then attached these brackets to a two by four, which spanned the whole width of the desk. From this angle, you can also see how I used additional cedar 
to create a shelf for the hard drives. Once I fine tuned the position of the door, I attached two latches on either side to help hold the door in place. I created two brackets with some foam tape attached to help prevent the door from vibrating when in the closed position. Next, I created the monitor stand, which the perfect height for me was two pieces of one by six on two individual four by four blocks. For the top of the desk, I used a three quarter sheet of birch plywood. It's sagged a bit in its two years as a desk, but I really like the way it looks. I had stained the plywood previously and sealed it with many generous coats of polyurethane. Let me know in the comments what you think about the dark and light contrast, or if you think I should use some stain on other areas of the desk. I'm personally really happy with how the desk came out, and I love being able to move it around the studio. Once I got all the hard drives on the shelf, the, the cables definitely don't look pretty, but that's what I like about the door. You get your cables sorted out, everything plugged in, and you can just close the door and not have to look at all that clutter. In total on the shelf, I have 129 terabytes of various different drives. I have editing raids, archive drives, duplicates of the editing raids. If you want me to do a video of how I manage my media, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you aren't subscribed yet, you should probably get on that just in case I do release the video in the future. For now though, I've got links to my favorite hard drives in the description down below. Some accessories I use in this desk setup are a multi-port USB 3.0 hub, I use these Sony headphones for mixing, which are kind of the industry standard affordable mixing headphones. For listening to music while working, I've got these fantastic headphones from Philips, which are large driver, open back, super comfortable, and surprisingly cheap. I also made this DC power pack thing where I taped a bunch of adapters together and screwed it underneath the desk. That way I could just run the cables from the side up into the desk and not have as many DC converters sitting around inside. I have a Kingston SD and micro SD card reader attached to a short extension cable so I can have multiple cards offloading at the same time. I also find power squids very useful or these short six inch extension cables. I can use these everywhere. My build was inspired by an article my friend Jeff Sheldon did over at Ugmunk. So definitely go check that out if you're looking at a monitor riser stand and also inspired by an article that Freefly Cinema put out about making a desk out of a door. That's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. Mm -hmm.